Morning folks, Lester here. And uh, today I have a message to bring to you, uh, information really, and I'm not real sure how you're going to receive it. I guess I'll just start off by saying that as far as managing the farm, the animals and whatnot, there's not really a blueprint, a uh, how-to guide on stuff like this. We're kind of learning as we go. And that's never been more true that when it comes to soils, soil types, the pH balance, and so many other things that I'm learning here about the soil here at Longhorn Lusters and why we're not able to grow any grass. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. I ask you to be patient with me today and let me kind of work myself through some things. I want to talk through some things. And, uh, well, just be patient. Just be patient and just know that I'm, I'm a work in progress, okay? I'm a work in progress, as is this land here behind me. I've brought you guys here to our eight acre pasture to show you and talk to you about something that Jamie and I are having to do. Ah, we have begun visiting properties that offer grazing and grasses, not to move. We're not planning on moving from what we're, you know, where we're at now. We're here at Longhorn Lester's and we're going to dig our feet in and, and hold out here as long as we can. But our cows are not able to live their best life without having grasslands to graze. Now, I'm going to point over to our left. Our bulls, along with our birds, are fine. We're not concerned about them. We may not have the best of grasses over there, but this field is at least manageable. And we're okay with this. What we're not okay with is this. What we're not okay with is our cows having to go deeper and deeper into the forest behind the house, trying to look for foraging materials to, you know, maintain a decent body weight. Cows need grass to graze. They do. Cows need grass to graze. And they're not going to get grass off this pasture, my friends, for at least a year to a year and a half. There's a very lengthy process. We've met with the ag office. He has a soil sample. It's very acidic. There's also a worm that's causing us not to have any grass here. We can treat it. It's going to take a very lengthy process. It, that includes putting down lime, disking, possibly bringing in some more soil, and then allowing a grass to grow for at least six months. You heard me correct. You have to allow a grass to grow for at least six months before you can graze it. What that means is we have at least a year to a year and a half before our cows can actually graze this front pasture. My friends, we don't have a year or a year and a half. So our options as of right now, we actually have two options. Number one is to return our cows back to the sanctuary where we would have to undergo an extensive fencing project and when I say cows, I only mean the females. We'd have to undergo an, undergo an extensive fencing project to uh, redo all of the fences that we could in fact keep um, our heifers or our females on our side and keep the, uh, the bulls on the other side. And as you guys know, that's not one fence, that's a double fencing. And that's, that's extensive, that's expensive. Uh, not to mention, it's also temporary. We all have talked about this a hundred times. I don't want to re go through all this again. And this is between me and my dad, not between you and my dad. Please, no one message my dad. It's none of your concern. I'm giving you the heads up because you're a part of this family, but you're not that part of the family. So it's ridiculous to have everyone emailing my dad every time we discuss something. My dad has cows. My dad enjoys his cows. And that someday my dad will decide to downsize his cows. And when he does that, he'll deed off some property. But that's in my dad's time. This is not in your time. 
So our other, our second option is to go ahead and look around to buy some pasture land. Jamie and I have visited three different properties yesterday. I will include some video of those three properties right here. But I will say we have a very, we have a strict and tough criteria that the pastures have to meet. I'll just kind of summarize them right quick. We have to have a fresh water source. We have to have fresh water. Um, natural water is great in the form of a pond, a creek, a spring, a river. But we also know that we're big on having a fresh water supply that we can change out daily and not allow it to be stagnant or stale or dry, depending on what Mother Nature is going to do at do to us. So fresh water is mandatory. We also need to have an established grass for grazing, the right kind of grass. We don't want to fall through the same trap we did over here and see a beautiful pasture, but with the wrong kind of grass. We need a good grazing grass. Uh, we, it has to be safe for our animals. If we're going to have our female cows over there for a year, it has to be safe. We don't want to have it where it's surrounded by, you know, on a busy street or having lots of neighbors walking by and or visiting the property while we're not there. We need to make sure that the land and the property is safe. The cows have to be safe. Um, it has to be within driving distance and our criteria right now our range is no more than 30 minutes we do not want to have to drive an hour to go see my cows every day we already drive a ways to i'm a survivor several times i'm a survivor several times a week and uh, we don't want to be going a different direction to go visit my cows every day so i don't mind driving uh, don't forget that i drove an hour to work every day for 25 years and that was also in traffic uh, I drove home that same route every day. So 25 years of driving an hour has conditioned me to not mind. I don't mind a good drive. I don't want to have to drive every day for, you know, however long this is going to take. Another reason why I think it's wise to invest in a new property as far as pasture is because we need a hay crop. We need a hay source. Uh, we've been getting our hay from Aunt Joanne and Uncle Raleigh for years. But Joanne's getting older, and she has surveyed out her property to be deeded off to her children and her grandchildren. And it's, it's not possible to go by to every child and every grandchild and try to secure the rights to bail their hay. Uh, at some point, that may be fine for a temporary, but it's not a long-term solution. So bottom line is, for Jamie and I, who have to manage the farm, who have to think about the well-being of over a hundred grass eating hay eating farm animals we have to be wise and think about our future we are not asking anything of you financially we will find a way and we'll take care of it uh, all we need is your patience and understanding and your trust in knowing that we're doing the best for our babies and we're doing the best for the long-term future of our babies it would be very unwise of us not to plan ahead when you have so many mouths who are dependent on you. So um, we will talk to you more about it, but uh, this is a discussion between you and I, not you and my dad. And I, I only say that because every time we talk about this, there's 20 people who go off and email my dad and try to encourage him to do this or do that. And that is not your place, people, folks, friends. I'm not trying to be mean. But once again, that is not your place. Find, just, I'm just going to leave it right there. That's not your place. This is between you and I, not you and my dad. All right, we'll let you know what's going on. But I wanted to bring this to your attention and let you know what our thoughts are, what our plans are, and what we've been up to. Oh, my goodness, Tex. Uh, Tex is going nowhere. He and the boys will be fine over here.
very last property that we're gonna look at today, uh, once again, is just acreage. There's 50 acres and it is divided into four parts. There's four quadrants. Can I call it a quadrant? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so it's already crossed fence. Supposedly there's animals that are already grazing it, meaning that the fences must be decent enough to hold animals in. And it's on top of a hill coming up. Now listen, we are, we are on the freeway. We are 10 minutes away from Tractor Supply. I love that. Oh, this is that weird house. Look, look at the windows. I don't understand it. It looks like feet coming out of it. Yeah, there's something coming out of that house. Uh, it's a long story, different video. But uh, this place up here, it's on the freeway, but off the freeway. You'll see what I mean in a couple of seconds here. We are, is it right here? Okay, so here we go. And yes, there, the freeway does run through here, but we're not, you know, we are not right on the road, and the animals are not right here on the road. They're off the road quite a bit, and you have to come with this little nook over here to get over here. It's right beside a rest stop. That's a rest stop, a truck stop on each side, but not a gap. It's just a rest stop. It's a truck with a resting stop. So, I don't know. 